Hey, we are going to be, um, you know, spending our last day on Chapter 9, which is here on October 27th. Chapter 9, as you know, we've been looking at assemblies and just putting parts together. The first part of Chapter 9 was working through um, a number of tutorials in the book and kind of getting acclimated with doing them. And then now we have um, two assembly problems that we um, are kind of starting from, from scratch, not, I mean, kind of using what we learned in the tutorials and then applying it to, um, to these assemblies. So yesterday we did our first assembly, which was 9-1. So if you need to look back there to um, get kind of the process and the, the things that you need to do, the demo on that one that's there. And now we're gonna move to 9-3. This is the adjustable shaft support. So um, to find the parts for this adjustable shaft support, we're gonna go into the chapter nine assembly practice learning plan. And it's actually here in the homework folder, right with the homework assignment. So here you'll notice for nine one, the step assembly, uh, the step shaft assembly, we have all of the parts for that one. And then for the adjustable shaft, which I'm gonna do today, these are the parts for it. Now, what I already did is I already downloaded these parts and put them into the working directory that I'm gonna be working from, which is the one that I've been using all the time. I just keep putting all the same parts in there. It's just kind of easiest to do that. So, um, so I have um, Creo already open and I need to now set my working directory and I've already downloaded all of those parts into my working directory. So I'm on my H drive, Creo, Creo 1. I've been putting them there. I know this is technically Creo 2, but that's just what my working directory is. Um, and then I'm going to start new with an assembly. And we're going to call this adjustable staff support. Okay. And we're going to, oh, it says that, I'll just call it one. It says that it's uh, already used. Okay, so now we're, we're here, we're starting new. The first part we're going to pull in. Now, as Creo always tells us is to think about how we're actually going to make this part. So we would start this part with the base support, the base support. So I'm going to pull that base support in first, and we're just going to fix it, okay? Just going to fix it, and then we're going to say, okay, all right? So I like to I like to change my colors. The, the gray is kind of boring. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show it as a blue part. Okay. So so there we have it. There's our part. Now I'm gonna pull in my next one, which is gonna be the vertical shaft. The vertical shaft. Open that. And now I need to place this. So the placement that I like is to line up each one of the center lines here. And the center line for this one is at the very bottom, okay? For this one and this one. And I wanna make those coincident, okay? So that way everything is centered here. Now I do need this vertical shaft to be a little bit above and they don't give us the dimension there. But if we look at the yoke, the thickness of the yoke there is three quarters of an inch. And then it kind of shows it in the diagram that there's a little bit of a gap. So I use the distance of, so my new constraint here, is gonna be the top here of that vertical shaft and the top of my base support. I'm gonna do a distance of one inch. So we get a quarter inch gap-ish. And again, um, it is adjustable with the, uh, the set screws and stuff that we put in place. So I'm fully defined here. So I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna change my color to, we'll make it yellow. Okay, we'll make that yellow. All right, so there is my vertical shaft in there. I'm gonna hit save. Okay, I'm gonna hit save. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the yoke to the top. So I'm gonna to go to assemble, the yoke, open, and I am gonna make the top of the yoke and the top of that vertical shaft coincident, okay? So I'm gonna do a coincident and I'm gonna click on the top surface here and let me zoom out a little bit. Oh, and the top surface right here and those are gonna be on the same level or coincident, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, like this, and I'm gonna line up the center lines of each one of those or the axes. So new constraint, I'm gonna go from the axis here to the axis right there, and those are gonna be coincident as well, okay? 
So my yoke is on my base. All right, and that's fully constrained, so we're good. We are good, final save. Okay, final save. All right, so now what I need to do is add in my bushing housing, the, the piece that's gonna go in between here. Um, if, I, if I look underneath my, um, my camera here, That bushing housing is right here, right here, and it's gonna go in between in that direction so you can see where it's located. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of zoom out here. I'm gonna pull in that bushing housing, open, and that guy's right here. So I'm gonna rotate this around, rotate it this way. in location ish okay and now what I'm going to do is I am going to first get the hole through here and this hole coincident so they're they're on the same center line in the same direction so I'm going to do placement and I'm going to go into the cone part here for where that set screw is going to sit in and the cone part here and that that makes them coincident okay not fully constrained yet only partially constrained so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the plane here, I believe it's the top plane of my, of my bushing housing and the top plane of my yoke, and I'm gonna make those parallel, make those parallel so it orients those, okay? Still partially constrained here. And the last thing that I need to do is to line up the, I think it's the front plane of my bushing and the front plane of my yoke and make those coincidence. Okay, and now I'm fully defined. And that centers everything on our, on our yoke. Okay, so it looks good. I'm gonna hit the okay, and I'm gonna change my color on my bushing housing to, we'll do red, we'll do red. Okay. All right, now, <laughs> here's my challenge. My, uh, my set screws are always like, my, uh, there's such little easy parts, right? That they're, you just kind of like put them in place when we assemble and they're easy peasy, but on here, they just pose challenges for me. I don't know why, but um, we'll get these in place and, um, and see how we look. All right, so I'm gonna do the set screw dog point. I'm gonna say, okay. And I'm gonna open that and I should be able to see that. There we go, down there. I'm gonna kind of get it up over here and in place in this direction. Okay. And what I wanna do is I am going to zoom in and out here. I am going to get this so that my cone portion here is going to be coincident with the inside diameter of the ear hole on our yoke. So I'm gonna do my placement here. I'm gonna start with this guy. I'm gonna zoom in and do the cone here, and those are coincident, okay? So it's in there, all right? So I need to now place it. It's partially constrained. I need to place it now, right? So I am going to do a new constraint, and I'm gonna do a distance from this surface to that surface, and I'm gonna say about a 32nd of an inch, okay? It's really gonna depend, 0.03, it's really gonna depend on when they, you know, put it in there and tighten it down, but that looks, that looks pretty good, okay? So as we look, it's out just a little bit, but it is going into and through to hold our bushing housing in place here, okay? So I'm gonna say, okay, all right? I'm gonna change that color so we can see a differentiation. I'm gonna make that green, okay? All right, now I'm gonna put the other one on the other side, the other side, right? So we're gonna assemble that guy, we're gonna open, and we're going to place him or her, whatever, whatever he or she is, right? <laughs> we're gonna place it. It's an it, it is an inanimate object, it's not a person. We're gonna pull that over here. 
And I gotta see where this is at. From there. <laughs> And it's not that this has to be perfect, but it does help when you're placing that it doesn't have quite as many, you know, options or many choices that it has to, that it has to make. Okay, so let's do that same process of placement. We're going to take the internal hole here and the cone surface, and we're going to make those coincident. And then we're going to do a, um, a new constraint, and we'll do a distance, and it's going to be from this surface to this surface right here. And we're going to do another 30 second of an inch. Let's see how that looks. Looks great. We're going to hit OK because it's fully constrained. And this one we're also going to make green. Okay, so those two set screws are in place. So those look good. Now, our challenge set screw, and I, I honestly have not gotten this fully into position, and I may have to report back to you on how to finish this up because this guy is at an angle. And um, some of the tricks that we were using before to get things in place um, aren't applicable because of the angle that it's at. But we can get it so that it's actually going along that axis, and I want to show you how to do that. So we're going to pull in that same set screw again. Okay. We're going to be down at our base here. We're going to pull this up. We're going to bring it over. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that same thing where we make it coincident to the internal hole here with that the cone of our set screw. So we're going to do the placement. We're going to hit the inside diameter here, and then we're going to do the cone here, okay? And now what this did was it put it right along the axis, okay? It put it right along the axis. Now, tried a couple things, and, I, you know, distance doesn't quite work, tangent doesn't work, um, you know, putting the point on the inside diameter of that vertical shaft, again, and it's because these are at an angle to one another. So it's not a surface that can hit up against it or be tangent to because of that angle. So that's our, that's our dilemma here. Now, what we could do is we could create another plane uh, in this assembly, but this isn't um, something that we actually, you know, had learned in our tutorial. So um, I'm a little hesitant and I'm a little bit, um, you know, not crazy about that. So um, right now, if we leave it here, you'll notice that it says partially constrained. If I try to, for instance, take this, this surface and make it tangent to this one, it doesn't want to do it because, again, it's at an angle. So if I do a new constraint and I do the surface here and the surface here and I make it tangent, it says it's invalid. Again, because of the angle that it's at, it's not going to work. So I'm going to I'm going to delete that or remove it, so I'm partially constrained here. So for right now, I am going to let you kind of, you know, push this into position. We know that it's along the right angle. It's just that it's not, it's not at a definite, definitive place. But I'm going to say we're going to leave it like that. Now we can continue here, even though it's partially constrained. It isn't going to, you know, give us an error or or say that that's a problem. It's just that we don't have it fully in place. But considering the type of part that it is, that it is a set screw, for right now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow that to occur. So when you do your screenshots here, oh, I did forget two parts. i got to put my bushings in the end here. So I've got my set screws in. Let's get the, let's get the bushings in because we want to make this, we want to make this official and um, finish it up. So I do need to put my bushings in place. Now these are pretty easy. These bushings, where, do, where are they going? Okay, there's one here, and I'm going to rotate it around, and those are going to go in. Those are going to go in either end here. Okay, so placement is going to be on this axis, and this axis are going to be coincident. Okay, so that should have straightened it out so they're along the same axis. I'm going to scooch this back over here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to make the new constraint. 
and we're going to have the surface of the bushing, the outside surface of the bushing, and the outside surface here of our housing are going to be coincident. There. Okay, can hit OK there. And then we're going to put that same bushing on this side. And we're going to do that one more time. Bushing, open. in relationship. Well, I want to place the axis of this in line with the axis of that. Let's look over at it now. And I want it to actually be coincident. Okay, yeah, we're good. And then I'm going to take the new constraint, the surface here, this guy, and the surface over here of that guy, and we're going to make those coats. There we go. And now we've got those bushings in place. This one's fully, fully constrained. We're going to go out here. We um, can see the, that bushing on this side, the bushing on this side. We've got the set screws in place. Again, yes, this one isn't fully constrained, but considering that it's a very minor part, if you would, I'm going to, I'm going to let it go, and we are going to. Um, we're going to let it be partially constrained for that one item. Notice that in the model tree, there's a little square next to this one. So by seeing just that one little square, I'm okay with that for that, that third set screw. The other ones, everything else should be fully, fully constrained because you should be able to get that all going. So that is the, um, that is the assembly process. So again, make sure that you take enough screenshots so we can see all of the items in here, including your model tree. And I, I'm okay to have that partially constrained um, set screw for um, that third one. If you do, you know, get it fully constrained, let's, um, let's kind of share with each other because um, for that one, that one's a challenge. That one's a challenge, but, um, but again, considering the part and the simplicity of it, I think we're, I think we're totally fine. I don't think we're gonna, we're gonna have any, um, Creole police come after us on it. Okay. All right. So any questions? I'm going to stop sharing so I can see the chat. Any questions from anybody that is uh, virtually right now? Okay. If not, that's that's totally good. So then I consider this done for the day. I'm going to reshare our screen. I just want to do the reminder that these two assemblies are due on our calendar by the end of the day tomorrow. Okay, the end of the day tomorrow. And we're gonna be starting chapter 10 tomorrow as well. Okay, chapter 10 tomorrow as well. So don't forget to do those. And then chapter 10 is going to be on like making the assembly drawings and using some of these assemblies that we've created now. And then, uh, you know, putting the bill of material, putting them on borders and all that kind of stuff. All right, so that's all that I have for you today. Um, again, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to uh, let you guys go. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a good day.